this is a question we get quite a bit, probably four or five times a month here at Blue Glow Electronics. And I got the question again yesterday and I thought to myself, I'm just going to break down and make a video on this topic. So what are we talking about? The KT88s, they've been around forever. The 6550s, they've been around forever. There's a lot of info out there on the web about interchangeability between those two. But now you've got some new players in the mix. The Tungsaw KT120, the Tungsaw KT150. Can I just interchange those tubes in my amp? And if I do, what results will it produce? And is this, you know, something I should do or not? So let's take a look. So you may wonder why, Mark, do you get these questions four or five times a month? Well, there's, there's a couple of use case scenarios here that I get. The first one is, if you guys remember back in 2018, I made a 12 part video series on how to build a KT88 amplifier single ended. And because of that, I get a lot of questions saying, hey, I want to build that amplifier, but I'd like to use KT120s or KT150s to make an even more power, powerful amplifier. Could I just substitute the tubes? The other questions I get are, hey, I've got this old leak amplifier or uh, Citation 2 that runs KT88s. Can I just swap those tubes out with the KT120s or 150s and end up with a more powerful output on my amplifier? So I see both of those use cases. And if that's not bad enough, I saw here recently where Prima Luna is going to be partnering with Tungsol to release the KT170 in even bigger tubes. So um, the questions will keep coming. So let's get to the answers. All right, chapter one here and I have a little story I've titled Similarities and Differences, a.k.a. The Sheets Don't Lie. So we pulled up all four data sheets for these tubes. We studied them, we compared them, and we made a little table here for you. And if you'll notice, without getting into the specifics here, there are some differences throughout this. You know, maximum plate dissipation on a KT88, 35 watts, 70 watts over here. So you kind of got to take a look here. There's a little compatibility, but there's an awful lot of maybe. So I'm going to give you a lawyer's answer on are they compatible or not. The answer is it depends. Let's dive deeper. All right, let's dive into the filament uh, voltage and, and current here. Okay, the filament is a, an element inside the tube that just like a, a light bulb filament heats up and causes the tube to conduct properly. Okay, um, and we they all use the same voltage here. You can see 6.3 volts across the board on these tubes. Okay, but the KT88 draws 1.6 amps of current. The KT120 1.95. The KT150 2 amps of current. Look at our little example down here. If we had an amplifier with four KT88s in it, say it's an old Citation 2 or something, you know, each tube drawing 1.6 amps of current right here with the KT88s, four times 1.6, we're going to need 6.4 amp winding inside of our power transformer or a separate filament transformer that would be inside that amplifier. Well, let's say we swap out the KT88s for four KT120s. All of a sudden, four times 195, we now need 7.8 amps. That's a 1.4 amp difference in what your power supply transformer, the filament winding in it, has to provide. The question you got to ask yourself is, does your amp, your power supply transformer, have the extra overhead to do that? If so, you're good to go. If not, you could potentially burn up this power transformer and have to get it rewound, and I can tell you, that is not easy to get done these days. Um, and you know, for some newer amplifier where you could probably find who made the transformer, you could probably look up the specs and see if you're fine or not. For an older amplifier, like a Leak TL50 or something like that, where do you even find those specs at? It's tough. So you, 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 you gotta make a decision on whether you wanna roll the dice there or not, you know? And maybe you just read online that somebody else has been doing it and, and it's worked out for a while. So, you know, maybe you're fine. Um, but there is some risk associated with this. It's the reason I've got the maybe here. Okay, up next, let's take a look here at the, um, the plate voltage, plate current, plate dissipation. If you'll notice, 600 volts that you can run a KT88 at. You can run it up to 87.5 milliamps of current through it, and that tube can dissipate. In other words, the plate can handle this much heat, 35 watts, okay? KT-150, look at that, 850 volts it operates at, 137 milliamps it can handle. That's 50% more. And that plate can dissipate 70 watts, twice as much. All right, you got to remember this. The tube doesn't determine the plate voltage or the plate current or the output power of a tube. 
the circuit that surrounds it does. All right, onward to chapter two, the big myth. All right, so this is the schematic from the KT88 amplifier build that we made that video series on. And whether you follow conventional current flow from positive to negative, or whether you follow electron flow that the electrons ball off the cathode and go to the plate of the tube, doesn't really matter in this scenario. We just know that we have current flowing through this tube. And we know some things about this tube. We know we have 450 volts sitting at the plate. We know we have 41 volts sitting here at the cathode. And we know down here at ground we have zero volts, which means we dro we are dropping 41 volts across this cathode resistor here, okay? And if we just use some Ohm's law, remember plate current is equal to cathode current for all intents and purposes. I is equal to V over R. We know we've got 41 volts here. This resistance is 500 ohms. You do the math, you come up with 83 milliamps of current is flowing through this tube, okay? If we come back here and look at this, this tube can handle up to 87.5 milliamps. So we're running it fairly hot, but we want that because we want to get a lot of power out. But we're also running it lower than the maximum, which is a good thing, okay? So let's say you take that KT88 tube out of that amplifier and you drop in a KT120 tube. Well, what happens? Well, this on the left here is the KT88's tube curve characteristics. And over here is the KT120 tube characteristic, curve characteristics. They are different, okay? What that means is you're going to be operating this KT120 in an operating point, maybe not at its optimal design, because this KT120 was designed to put out more power, to operate at a higher voltage, right? To handle more current. But you haven't changed anything about the circuit to accommodate that. So you're basically going to be operating this tube in a very cool region for it, okay? So I've got here, if all you do is swap out the tubes, you're operating this KT120 somewhere outside of its typical design parameters, okay? This will yield very subjective results depending on the amplifier and the listener's ear. In other words, you're running this tube cool. You're not putting 850 volts on it. You're not running 137 milliamps through it right? You're putting 450 volts. You're running 83 milliamps through it. So you're running it cool. That may sound really good to you. It may sound horrible to you. It's a very subjective thing. It will vary with the listener's ear. It will vary with the amplifier design, okay? What it does not do, back to the big myth, putting a one KT120 into an amplifier designed for a KT88 without changing anything else, does not result in a more powerful amplifier. The tube does not determine the output power. Okay, I need you to understand that. Now you may say to me, Mark, but I remember back on the little chart you had, you said that this tube can handle more power. Yes, there's a difference between handle and produce, okay? In other words, you can rebias this amplifier and redesign it Put higher voltages on it. Change bias so it pulls more current. And yes, it will put out more power. But without changing those other things, the tube itself doesn't yield you any more power, doesn't yield you any different results than the KT88 being in there. Other than you're operating the KT150 not in its optimal design location. You're running it cool which there again, subjective, might sound good, might not. So you're saying, okay, Mark, I'm kind of getting it, but I've already bought these KT120 or KT150 tubes. I, I want to get more power out of my amplifier. What do I need to change about it? All right, for illustrative purposes, I'm going to show you a super simplistic version of changing the bias. Might not be all that's really required, but it's a super simplistic version to help you understand here. So if we want to get we want to substitute in the KT120 in place of a KT88. To get more power out, we have to increase the current through the tube to near the 125 milliamps, right? So how are we going to do that? Let's say we want to run it at 120 milliamps so we're not running right there at the edge of the tube. Well, we'll go back to Ohm's law. I is equal to V over R. We're, we know 41 volts sitting here at the cathode. 
we want, then we're going to have to change this resistor to be a 330 ohm resistor instead of a 500 ohm resistor. And what does that net, net us? That nets us 120 milliamps. So, well, heck, Mark, that's simple enough. I buy two resistors, I swap them in my amplifier, I'm getting my 120 milliamps, I'm good to go. Are you? All right, if you follow conventional current flow here, B plus, you know, current flows from positive to negative. Um, it's going to flow down here, going to flow through your output transformer, which is also, by the way, your load resistor. Going to flow over, going to flow down through this tube and out back to ground, okay? And we're going to be flowing 120 milliamps of current around this little blue circle. Anyone see the problem here? Well, take a look at this output transformer over here. We use the EdCore CXSE25-5 in this amplifier. It's rated for 100 milliamps. Hmm. Open up your wallet. You're going to have to swap out your output transformer here if you're going to want to substitute in the KT120. And you're going to want to swap this resistor out and draw more current. Okay? Got to change your output transformer. There goes a couple hundred bucks right there, guys. Sadly, the story doesn't end there. So if you look back, this B plus right here where the current flows 120 milliamps. Well, guess what? It's feeding from right here on our power supply. Hmm. We're going to be feeding through this choke right here. Remember, this choke feeds two tubes, not just one. It feeds both output tubes. So 120 milliamps times two is 240 milliamps. We use the EdCore CXC125-10-200 MA. We need a new choke. So open your wallet up again. All right. Guess what? Hmm. Fun doesn't end there. Our power supply transformer is rated at 200 milliamps. And we've got to power two tubes at 120 milliamps now. That's 240 milliamps. We've got to swap out the power transformer now. Okay, and to get this KT120 amplifier now operating optimally, probably there is more to change than just changing out this single resistor. That would be one way of achieving it. But remember, you're going to be incre you're going to try to get as much out of this thing as you can and get it out of running in this cool operating spot. So you're going to bump this voltage here up from 450, probably more up into the what here. Seven, six, seven, eight hundred volt range. You're going to want to run more voltage through it, which means you're going to be changing a lot of things about this amplifier, and you're going to have to rebias it all the way around. And let me show you something here. All right, I don't, I'm out on Rob Robinette's website, which is a wealth of knowledge here, but I didn't want to get into this video today on about you know drawing load lines and whatnot. But it'll give you, it'll give you a little flavor here for for what he's talking about. He he does some design around the, the uh, 12AX7 here in the Fender um, amplifier. But I'll just, for kicks and giggles here, I'll show you. What you end up doing is you end up plotting out this, this red load line here, right? The operating voltage of your power supply, the, the amount of current that it would provide given the, um, given the right load resistor for your output tube. Um, from that, then you end up mapping this, this uh, pink line here, which is um, you're mapping the cathode current changes based upon the negative bias applied to the grid, right? And then from that, you end up with a quiescent operating point here, and that gives you your operating voltages for zero signal into this amplifier. What happens is as your signal comes in, it swings both ways up and down this operating line. The positive peaks swing one direction, the negative sweeps swing another. And you got to have enough headroom here not to clip out on either side or whatnot. Well, remember earlier, I said you just drop in a 120, you're operating in a different party in the load line. You may be in a place where you're clipping. You may be in a place where these lines here are not as linear. If you'll notice, they're fairly straight lines as they cross these curves. But as you get down in here, these lines are much more curved. So you're, you might be operating in a point on the curve characteristics where you've got some distortion coming in because you're not in a clean place here in the overall load lines. I'm not going to get into this. It would be an hour or two long class on it. 
you guys, this is a great resource, and I'll put a link to this site um, in, in the uh, description of the video. But it would help you understand that you've got to change even more than we talked about. So, in conclusion, if you're hell-bent on swapping out your KT88s with some 120s or 150s, here's what I'd recommend. One, pay attention to the heater current. Can your transformer handle that additional load? If you've got doubt and you've got room underneath the chassis, you could always drop in another filament transformer that does have the rating to handle powering your um, the 120s or 150s, and you'd be fine. If, if you've got doubts, be careful. Um, number two, will the tubes physically fit? Can they, you know, these 120s and 150s get bigger? You know, will they fit inside your chassis? Will they fit under the cage? Will they be touching each other or whatnot? Three, simply substituting in the 120 or 150 for an 88 or a 6550 may work, but results may vary greatly depending upon the amplifier's design and what the listener's ear likes to hear. Maybe they like this thing biased really cool and it sounds good to them. Hey, if so, have fun. If you actually want to get more power out of your amplifier, it's a redesign of the amplifier and may require swapping out many components, including expensive power transformers and output transformers, okay? Personally, me, I'd reserve the KT120s and KT150s for amplifiers that were specifically designed with them in mind and designed with their operating characteristics. That's just my personal opinion. Not to say you can't have some luck otherwise, and there's there's a lot of forums on the internet that, that talk about this, but I just thought I'd shed my light and my opinion on this entire topic. So when people email me and say, Mark, can I swap out the KT120 into the KT8080 amplifier, and what would that require? It requires a redesign, and I have not done that redesign, so I don't have the answer for you there on what all it might would take. All right, with that, I'm going to call this a wrap. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. We'll keep bringing them.